coming back. You know, a lot of times after a defeat, a setback, it would be easy to shrink back and not go forward with the rest of your life. But God wants you to keep going. God has a plan for your life. The things that have happened to you, the things that we've gone through, none of us like it. If you've gone through a, a relationship breakup, if you've gone through a job loss, if you've gone through something unexpected, you know how that wears on you. You know how that kind of gets the best of you. But you see, the enemy wants you to stop. God wants you to go forward. You know, I was reading a scripture verse. It's in the book of Joshua. They're going to put it up there. Coming back. You know, one of the most used phrases these last few days is, hey, you've gone through a tragedy. Someone would meet someone here. They would try to encourage them. Hey, you've gone through a tragedy, but you could bounce back. Matter of fact, we're going to help you bounce back. But what about you this morning about the different things you've gone through? We're in the middle of vacation season, the middle of uh, summer. We're in the middle of, you know, where it gets tough. It gets hard. There's a lot of challenges, financial difficulties, our job situation. It would be easy to get discouraged. It would be easy to allow those things that happen to you and I to get us to stop or to quit or to quit believing again. I want to read this scripture verse here. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourself. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. Some of you are starting right away saying, well, what does that have to do with my situation? What does that have to do with this Old Testament story about what I'm going through today? You know, it's hard to really understand, uh, you know, really what's going on in my life. You know, it's easy to think that you're alone. It's easy to think that it's not going better. But here's where this comes up. You know, remember the Old Testament where the people of Israel, they crossed the Red Sea. They were in slavery. They were in bondage. The Egyptians kind of owned them. They were, they were people that they made them work. And when Pharaoh got mad, he, he said, listen, take away the, the, the straw and make them make those bricks without that. And they were hard. God says, listen, I see your pain. I see what you're going through. It's not always going to be this way. As a matter of fact, eventually you're going to get free from this. They were called the children of God. God let them out. You can picture the stories, the, the parting Moses, the parting of the Red Sea. So Moses led them through, but then they came to the desert experience. They got through the bondage. They were, they were free. You would think after something good happened, you wouldn't have any more problems. But here also now they're learning again. They're developing their life and they're wandering around in the wilderness. They made mistakes. Matter of fact, it wasn't that long of a journey. And God uh, uh, made them go around and around. And 40 years they spent in the desert. But here's what happened. Then the crossing of the Jordan. The crossing of the Jordan meant going into their promised land. You had the Red Sea. You had the wilderness experience. You and I know what it is to go in a wilderness experience, don't we? We go through hard times. We go through struggles. Seems like we're going around and we're working every day. We're struggling we're not getting anywhere. We're making that payment. We're, we're doing this. We're, we're trying to be nice to people. We're trying to do what's right, but it seems like we're not getting anywhere. We thought the marriage was going to go better, and there we're fighting again on Monday. Oh, I won't talk about me and my wife uh, this week. You know, it seems like we we're doing, and then we were tired and all that, and we found ourselves struggling and arguing with each other at different times. But listen, 
there's we, the Jordan then. The crossing in the Jordan meant that they were now going into their destiny. Meant they were now could build homes. They could get jobs and they could serve God. The crossing of the Jordan. They finally did it. They crossed the Jordan. Then, here's what happened. Their first, though, there was enemies there. God said, it's your land, but you got to work the land. You got to go to work. You got to even drive them out. We don't understand everything about it, but he said, you got to drive them out. And, and they had to establish themselves. They did that. Their first conquest was Jericho. It worked out good. You know, the marching around seven times. Uh, uh, was it seven days? Was it, was it seven days or seven times? Or, okay. All right. We, we, let's act like we both don't know. Well, okay. It was something like that. And um, they marched around that wall. The walls came down. Then what happened? It was a great victory. They said, wow, we have a victory in our life. Aren't you glad that we get some victories in our life? Aren't you? Aren't you glad that it's not always dry and it's not always struggle? But we don't know where you're at this morning. But listen, here's what happened. They, they, they got that victory. And then what happened was, was the next city they went to, the people ran them out. It was a defeat. It says that, um, that the, the people just kind of, uh, it was a fight. They lost the battle. Some of you know what it is to lose a battle. You know what it is to come off something good. You thought the job was going to work out? You thought the relationship, you thought that you had enough money, you thought this was going to work out? And then Tuesday hit, you got the telephone call. Your car broke down. You know how life deals with us. You had a fire. I had my whole week plan. As a matter of fact, I, I got up. I thought I was, after the second day, I was seeing all, everything packed to the ceiling. And I'm thinking, wow, in our bedroom. And I got started getting a little discouraged. For a second, I said, man, I wish this could turn around. I want to get back. Then I started thinking for a, a moment. Don't you think those people wanted to get back? They're waking up, and they wish they had some boxes to move around. And they are thinking how they're going to get on. They had to go to work the next day, and they had to go with the clothes on their back, and they had to deal with things. Sometimes we go through things that's hard to understand. So here's the way the story went down. They had a struggle, and... They had to regroup. And truthfully, part of their struggle was because they had to correct some things. You know, sometimes we got to correct some things. Let's be honest. Maybe we got to learn to be nicer to people. Maybe God wants to speak to us some way. There's nothing wrong with taking a look at our lives on a regular basis and trying to correct it. Maybe you're, we're doing something in our lives that's not pleasing to God. There's nothing wrong with taking a look at internally and correcting it. You know, that's what it's about. There, so we could have wholesome lives we could develop. We don't need to live with addictions. The addictions ruin our life. We don't need to live with strife and fighting. That ruins our life. So here's what happened. God truthfully didn't like a few things they were doing and he, they needed to correct some things. So what happened was is they, 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 they lost this battle. They corrected it and that's where we pick up here. They corrected it but here's the thing. After we go through a defeat, you know what we want to do many times? We want to shrink back. After we go through something that hurt us many times, that's when we say, I don't want to fill out that application again. I don't want to try again. I, my business, I, I, it, it, it went south. I invested in the stock market in 2008. I lost it all. Meaning, we don't want to try again. Oh, that was an advocate to do that now. As a matter of fact, no. The stock, I shouldn't even brought that one up. Uh, forget that one, I even said that one. Okay, here we go. So here's where it picks up. Then the Lord said to Joshua, three quick things that I got out of this. You know, I'm simple-minded, so I got to really put some things here. Three quick things. What does coming back look like for you? What does bouncing back look like for you? What does coming back, what does you getting back on track look like for you? You say, Pastor, come on. Help me out here, right? I, I need three quick things. First of all, directed. God directed them. Number two, it was decided. What do you mean by that? Did you know the fight you're in is a, a fight, but it's a fixed fight? Meaning, you're going to win at the end of the day. You may struggle today. You may go through hardships, but God has promised you that you are going to win. Listen, listen. 
Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Listen, listen. This was meant to be a tragedy. But they're going to rebuild and have new carpet. They're going to rebuild and have new furs. It's all going to work out. Listen, he just said, I like, I'm going to hold him up on this. I'm going to call. He better be here next week. He said, I have a new family. I have a new friend. So I'm expecting him to show up for church. No. His daughter. You heard me say that now. His daughter spent with, with our daughter. They became friends. Listen, tragedy has God as a way of working through tragedy. God has a way of helping. So three, they were directed, they were decided, and they, it was different. What do you mean? It was different now. Three quick things. This, coming back. We could help coming back. Uh, we could give them stuff. But God now, it's Sunday, wants to speak to us how he is going to help you come back. It's one thing for me to help my brother come back. And I could do a little. Community could do a little. But when God helps you come back, whoa. When God is on your side and breathes into your life again, Amen. breathes into your business again and helps it to come back. God's helping your business to come. God's helping something that was dead to come back. That's a big thing. Quickly, quickly here. Different. I smell the pizza. I think it's coming. Okay. <laughs> coming back. Then the Lord said to Joshua, what does all this mean? When we're talking about quickly about uh, directed, did you know God starts speaking again? You know, I like that. What does coming back look like for you in your life? Give me some bullet points, Pastor. Give me some mile markers of what coming back looks like for me. God starts speaking again. Then the Lord said to Joshua, you know, it was 400 years before God spoke earlier, but God starts speaking again. Listen, the best thing that you could have in your life is God to speak to you. God to give you a thought. God to help you in some way. The best thing, I love to speak to you, and I'll do it as much as, but when God speaks to you, you know, people make fun of that in prayer. You speak to God, and I believe he speaks back to you in your heart. He has a way of whispering in your heart, comforting you and helping you. He said, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. What does, what does being directed look like for you? You got to not be afraid this time. What do you mean, pastor? Well, you see, I just lost my house. And I didn't. I'm just paraphrasing for some that have. I just lost my job. I just lost my business. It went down 30%. It's, I just lost this. I, I lost that client. It would be easy to be afraid and say, I'm not going to try again. You know, I didn't get the job. God wanted to encourage them. Do not be discouraged. You know the enemy wants to discourage you? Sure. But God wants to encourage you. Because if you're discouraged, you're not going to try again. If you think nothing good can happen in your life again, you're not going to try again. You've got to be encouraged. If you made a mistake, well, who hasn't? Who hasn't? Listen, we've all made mistakes. But the neat thing is that God can help us in our mistakes. Here we go, here. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack. He said, listen, he started speaking to them and giving them direction. Did you know, Joel, Pastor Joel said it, this, he said it. He said, God can give you an idea that can move you 50 years down the road. God can help you and move you. My brother, my sister. Sure, we may not like where we're at today in our life. Who does? Sure, we may wish we had more. We wish that we were farther along in life. Sure, we wish that you know, we didn't do that. That that didn't happen. But no matter what, listen, this time God's going to change it. Take the whole army with you. You know, last time they got a little cocky. They took everyone at Jericho. But the next time they said, oh, God's with us. Ooh, we're good. Uh, we're great. We're America. We're great. We're, we're somebody. We're nobody without God. Listen, oh, we, we got it all under control. Oh, woo, we can beat up, we can do anything, we can take over. And here's what happened, they got to the next one. They only took a few people, and it didn't work out. 
Now God says, I'm going to redirect you. You know what I believe as we come to church on Sunday? God has a way of redirecting our lives. You know the best thing that happened to me? You know, I, I like watching the news at night and different things. And sorry. Uh, 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 but you know, the best thing the last three days, I haven't watched no news as far as uh, cable TV. What do you mean? And you know, I turned it on for a second. It was like three in the morning. And, and I decided, okay, I better make sure the world is still there. My outside world. And I turned it on for a second. And I turned it off. I'm thinking, I've been watching this junk. They're trying to discourage me. You know, and I turned on my favorite channels. I went through them all. But I started thinking, you know, it would be easy to allow these things to weigh us down. Sometimes, you know, I want to go back to helping people. I wanted to go back to the real things instead of allowing someone to dictate me and my life how I should feel and, and how I should live my life. Well, here he goes. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack. So they were directed quickly. It was decided. For I have delivered into your hands the king. You know what God said? You shall do to Ai and his king as you did to Jericho. Here's what he basically said. Do it again. I corrected you. You got it out of your life. If you're playing around with something, if you're doing something wrong, you're stealing something from the office, get rid of it. If you're just taking something stupid, thinking, oh, my boss won't listen. You don't need that. Your destiny is too important. You're a dollar thing. Stuff stupid. God has big plans for you. And it would be easy. So here's, he says, this time it's going to be different. This time, he says, for I have delivered you into your hands. He says, now it's determined. May I say this? You know what's standing in place of you and your destiny? Is God opening up the next door for you. Did you know I believe that God wants to open up a door to help you to become all that he's called you to be? It says here that, that I've already done it. You know when these words were spoken, nothing was done. All they were doing was when they were off a of defeat, they corrected some things, they cleansed it, they got it together, they asked for forgiveness, and then God says, okay, I'm ready to do it all over again. Here's what you need to understand. You come to church, God, you don't even got to come to church. You can turn on your radio. You don't got to come to church. I, I want you to come here because I don't want to preach to nobody. Uh, but you, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. God, I'm sorry. I just say my sorry. I got to John David, I'm sorry for being mean this week. Uh, uh, okay, I got too many for sorry. You know what? Once we do that, we don't stay down. We move forward. And we try it again. And that's what he's trying to say. This time it's going to work. Here's what I want to say to you. What God has started in your life, he's going to finish it. You might have had a setback. You might have had something come against you. But this time it's going to work. My brother, my sister, don't stop now. The enemy, don't play into the enemy's hands. Don't stop and say it's not going to work. Well, I made mistakes. Well, I've done this. It would be easy to stop. Well, that relationship didn't work out. No guys for me. All guys think I'm stupid. You know, oh, that person. No, it's not going to. Listen, you got to try again. You got a beautiful spirit inside you. It's attractive to someone. Here we go. You shall do. It was a fixed fight. Here's what I heard. Saw someone say, and I'm going to go with this and I'm going to close. Someone said, it's a fixed fight. We've read Revelations. We win. So you're just walking through it. You're walking. You win. But here's what someone said. A fixed fight is still a fight. You're in a fixed fight. With God, all things are possible. You're going to win. But you're still in a fight. And that's tough. You are going to come out of this. My brothers, my they're going to come out. They're going to be okay. But it's still a fight. The last quick thing was different. It's different. What do you mean by that? Except that you may carry off their plunder. The third, the third portion is right, starts right there. Except. Here's what they did. God said, in Jericho, I don't want you to take anything. Everything goes to the treasury. So they could, I don't know, that was God's way of doing it. Everything, the first Jericho was like the beginning. Everything went to the treasury. But he said, but the people needed stuff. He said the second time around, he was going to. But was, here's what happened at Jericho. Someone took some of the things and hid it in their tents. That's what created the problem. They stole. And uh, so God didn't like that. Well, they got it together. They got back on track. And now God was saying it's going to be different this time. He said this time, everything the next city, 
that they leave behind is yours. Here's what I want to say. God's going to provide for you. God's going to give you what you need. Don't take the shortcut and do it in a way that's not honoring to God. Let's do it God's. Listen, God's way is the right way. Listen, except this time you could carry off their plunder, their livestock, for yourselves. You, you, you have ideas. You have a dream. Some of you want a house. Some of you want a better job. You don't want to always be in the country. You, you want to own that company. Well, that's, that's good. Uh, as long as you help us if you own that company and, and bring some more. No, okay, okay, we'll stop there. Uh, set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole people uh, moved out to attack. So he said, this time it's going to work. Everything that you wanted before, I'm going to now give you. Here's what I want to say. God's a loving God. God cares for you. He knows you have desires, needs. We're talking about coming back. Listen, my brother, my sister. I don't know where you're at, but coming back is a process. But I do know this. God's going to get you there. God's going to help you to become all that he's called you to be. That's what I like about Pastor Joel and his, and his thinking. As a matter of fact, he's helped me to think better this way. You know, one touch of God. He could get you farther than you ever dreamed about. Can you believe that this week that God's going to turn it around for you? He says it good. He says it better than I. He says, you know, it takes just as much brain power to worry. Let's believe as we go out of here that God is working in our lives. That God, then when it gets tough on Monday, Tuesday, we, we say a prayer. Yeah, my brother says before he gets out of bed, he drops to the ground. Lord, help me. It doesn't mean you're not going to pray. You're going to have difficulties. But it means that God's going to help you get through it. And I am done. Jesus had difficulties, didn't he? Sure. It's called the cross. He hung there. The Bible says he could have left at any time. But he says he could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't do it. He stuck to it. Stick to life. Stick with God. He'll take you places you never dreamed were possible. It says, you know what it says? It says that he hung there because he saw into all eternity and he saw you. If God could make it through. And you know what? Now he sits up and he's glorified. And now we're here giving thanks. And now we have a destiny. If you give up, look at the people that are going to be needing behind you. You have a destiny. You have something that God wants to do in your life. In the middle of the summer when it's hard, struggle, don't give up. God loves you. So Joshua and the whole army, they moved out. Here's my thought. Let's move out. Meaning, let's do what we're called to do. Go to work again. Take the test all over again. Try to make that sale all over again. Do the things that God has put in your heart in the first part. Your dreams and desires are not wasted. They're not something that you got to give up on. There's something that you could still pursue. You could still try. But the enemy wants to discourage you to get you to think, Father, bless your people, we pray. Lord, help them, we pray. There's someone here in our closing. Say, hey, I need God in my life. I need Jesus to help me. I'm made some mistakes, I've done some things I'm not proud of. But just between you, you and the Lord, no one's looking around. All heads are bowed. No one's better than each other. We're, this is business between God and you. But if that's you this morning, I invite you to raise your hand just between you and God and say, God, I need you. I need your help. If that's you, feel free. Feel free. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay? Put your hands down. Let's pray together, Father. We love you and thank you. As a matter of fact, let's say this together out loud. Let me lead it to you here. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now,